John chapter 4, verses 46 to 54. Before we go into the video, I'd just like to mention a few things. One is we're expecting a thunderstorm tonight on the Oregon coast, which is very unusual. So if it starts booming, then that's what it is. And second is today I finished editing the fourth edition of the book of Exodus. I uploaded it, it to the bookstore. You can go on our bookstore, uh, apostolicbible.com, and you'll see that when you go to the bookstore, it'll have new uh, Apostolic Bible, Old Testament, fourth edition, uh, Genesis, Exodus, and it's free to download. With those, we'll go into the uh, section. It's uh, the royal official's son is healed. And the Greek word that we will be featuring is number 4592. Sign is the English word. And again, the participles will be highlighted in purple. It begins... Ilthen un o e sus palin is ton cana tis Galileas. Opu epi se to idor enon. So he goes to, up to Cana. We'll go to a map here and we will show you. Uh, this is Palestine and we have the Sea of Galilee where this is at. He's going to go over here to Cana. Now, where he was, I'm not sure if he was in Capernaum. I think it said he went back up in his homeland. So it could have been up Capernaum or Nazareth, which is over here. But either, uh, in either case, he's now in Cana. And we find that the royal official was stationed here in Capernaum. And he uh, goes across to Jesus. And Jesus, in the last section, had went through Samaria, talked to the woman the Samaritan woman in Sychar, which is down here. And that's where he went through and from uh, Jerusalem where he was at. Now, after this, he'll go back down to Jerusalem, I think, in the next section. So he is now in Cana. It says, Cain tis vasilikos u o eos istheni in Capernaum. And there was a certain royal official whose son was weak and dying uh, in Capernaum, which is on the Sea of Galilee. Uh, Utos Akusas Oti Sus Iki. Uh, this one, having heard that Jesus is come uh, from out of Actis Eudeus, which was down there in Jerusalem, uh, East Galilean, Appeal the prosav tone. He went forth to him. So he goes across from Capernaum to Cana. Ke irota av tone ina katavi ke iasite av tu tone ion. And asked him that he should come down and should heal his son. Now, earlier we had uh, the centurion who had a sick servant. And he didn't come. He sent somebody else because he said he wasn't worthy to be under the same house as roof as Jesus, more or less. And but this man, uh, he does go and sees Jesus that he would come down. And says and heal him uh, that he should ke irota avton ina katavi ke iasite heal him his son. Emele gar apothiniskin, for he was about to die. That is the son. And ipen un o e sus pros of tone. And Jesus then said to him, Eon me simia ke terata idite, if you should not behold signs and miracles, umi pistevsite. And no way should you believe. That's a strange thing to say, I believe. I mean, it doesn't say of anything of this man uh, not believing. He did come to Jesus, so he must have believed that Jesus was going to heal his son. But yet, Jesus 
mentions um, the signs and the miracles if you don't believe. Now, maybe the man had a problem with that. Maybe he wanted, uh, he, he's looking for a, a miracle, yet not wanting to believe in Jesus. That's a possibility, but that would just be uh, presumptuous to, to think that. But it, whatever it is, Jesus mentions about the signs and the miracles. When the signs, 4592, simia is the word that we are going to go through. Uh, it appears 177 times in the Old Testament. It begins in Genesis 1.14, where it talks about the celestial bodies uh, for seasons, days, and years to be signs uh, for those. And then in Genesis 4.15, it mentions the sign of Cain to protect him from being hurt. Genesis 9.13 says, I put my bow in the cloud, and it will be for a sign of covenant. And that would have been the rainbow. So the rainbow is a sign by God, as are the sun, moon, and stars. Genesis 17.11, it says, And you shall be circumcised of your flesh, of your foreskin, and it will be for a sign of covenant between me and you. And circumcision is a sign. Uh, the plagues that Moses uh, dealt with in Exodus 4 and on uh, were all signs, like the frogs and the midges and so forth, the darkness. Uh, Exodus 12, 13 says, And the blood shall be to you for a sign upon the houses in which you are there. And that is the blood on the doorposts uh, that the angel would go over and he wouldn't kill the people, the firstborn in that house. So that was the blood was a sign. Exodus 31, 13 says, a Perceive and guard my Sabbaths, for it is a sign by me. The seventh day rest, the Sabbath is a sign. Numbers 21, 8, God tells Moses, Make to yourself a serpent of brass and put it upon a sign. And so the people that looked upon uh, the serpent, if they were bit by a serpent, they wouldn't die. That was a sign. Um, the actions of Korah being swallowed up in the earth when he revolted against Moses. In Numbers 26.10, the action was a sign of him, all these people going into the earth. Now, Jesus uh, talks about signs, as we see right here, if you do not believe. He says in Matthew 12, 39, a generation wicked and adulterous seeks anxiously a sign, and a sign shall not be given it except the sign of Jonah the prophet. And see, Jonah was three days and uh, nights in the belly of the whale or the sea monster, so would Jesus be in the heart of the earth. So Jesus says a wicked and adulterous uh, generation seeks a sign. Well, later that is important. We have to remember this verse that Jesus doesn't particularly uh, have put a high regard to people looking for signs. Matthew 24 30, it says, And there shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in the heaven. And when he returns, Jesus says, So there will be a sign there. Now, asking for signs, uh, Matthew 12 38. It says, Then answered some of the scribes and Pharisees, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. They wanted to see these things. They heard about him raising the widow of Nain's son, walking on water, possibly, uh, the wedding at Cana and turning water into wine, healing lepers, all of these. Now, we get into terminology here. There's no place that any of those are called signs per se. Uh, they were mostly called works. We, we consider the miracles, walking on water and, and so forth. Uh, they were all works. And there's also portents is another translation of the word for semia, uh, a portent, and also a wonder. Thaumazia was a wonder. So uh, signs and wonders they kind of go hand in hand in many places as far as the terminology. The disciples, 
in Matthew 24, 3 say, Tell us when these things will be, and what is the sign of your arrival and the completion of the eon? Now, they're not asking him to do any type of a miracle, but they want to know about his arrival. Prophecy. Uh, in the future, in the Bible of Jesus, it says in Matthew 24, 24, by Jesus, for false Christs and false prophets shall arise and shall give great signs and miracles so as to mislead, if possible, even the chosen ones. So now he's saying there's going to be false signs and miracles along with him saying an adulterous uh, evil generation seeks anxiously a sign. A lot of signs in the book of Revelation. Uh, we'll just go through a list of them here, but not in, in detail. Uh, the woman wearing the sun, moon underneath her feet, Revelation 12.1. The fiery dragon uh, with seven heads and ten horns, Revelation 12.3. They're called signs, Simea. Uh, the second wild beast from the earth, with fire coming down from heaven, Revelation 13.13. 13. The seven angels with the seven last calamities in Revelation 15.1. Revelation 16.14 says, For they are spirits of demons doing signs, which go forth unto the kings of the entire, entire inhabitable world. So these demons are going to be doing signs. And then the wild beast in Revelation 19.20 is able to do signs. Now miracles, it said uh, down here, uh, Terra, Tau 5059, is also used in many places synonymous with signs, signs and miracles. Um, there, is there a difference? Yes, there is, because uh, there are two different words, and God chose different words, so different meanings uh, for each word. Now, the miracles, we only have 57 places, it appears, in the Apostolic Bible. In the Old Testament, uh, it's called a, a portent in Ezekiel 24, 24. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, it's tied uh, to signs in many places. Uh, the miracles, it says, in Egypt were with signs. Uh, Numbers 9.10. And First Kings 13.3, it says, And he executed in that day a miracle, saying, This is the saying which the Lord spoke, saying, Behold, the altar is torn, and the fatness being poured upon it shall be poured out, and the altar tore. And that was in First Kings 13.3. So there's a few places where it uses the word terata. Uh, it's also used uh, with uh, with uh, Thavmazia, 1 Chronicles 16.12, would be miracles and wonders. Uh, in Psalm 71.8, it says, I was, as it were, a miracle to the many. Now, who is he referring to? The psalmist could be to Jesus. And then in Joel 2.30, he says, And I will execute miracles in the heaven and upon the earth, blood, fire, and vapor of smoke. And this also appears uh, in the New Testament uh, in Acts. And in the New Testament, Matthew 24, 3, it says, uh, Tell us when these things will be, and what is the sign of your arrival and the completion of the eon. And then in many miracles were done by the apostles and the disciples. Acts 2.43 talks about that, 5.12 and 14.3. Stephen, it says, And Stephen, full of belief and power, did miracles and great signs among the people, in Acts 6.8. As far as Jesus saying he did a miracle, that doesn't appear as such. I mean, they're called works, as we'll go find out here a little bit. Barnabas and Paul did miracles, and that mentions that in Acts 15, 12. Now, I'm thinking about the signs and miracles. Uh, when I was a young man, oh, for 12, 13 years old, my mom used to give me a quarter when I go to Sunday school to put in to the little bank. 
but sometimes I would say I don't feel good. I'd get the quarter and I'd stay at home. And then when she left to go to church, I would go down to the store and I'd buy baseball cards with a quarter. And <laughs> then I would come back home and turn on the TV. This was at the beginning of TV. The screens were a little small and they were black and white. And there was a man on there called Oral Roberts. And he had, uh, uh, as a sign when it came on, expect a miracle if you want it to happen. So these miracle people doing these miracle services on radio and TV and now probably the Internet have appeared in my lifetime. And so I remember that Jesus saying, um, if you're looking for signs, then that wasn't good. And that evil people and false prophets are going to be doing uh, miracles and signs. Now, I'm not saying that Oral Roberts was, but that is what Jesus said. And this is what Oral Roberts did. Then after Oral Roberts, a woman called Catherine Kuhlman came on a TV program. And she had this high-pitched voice, I believe in miracles. And she would uh, go through that. They were kind of like um, healing services. Now, healing and miracles are not the same. A healing throughout the Bible in the New Testament, yes. Ask for healing. Anoint the people with oil for a healing and so forth. But the miracles, uh, I don't see that. Then the next one was a man called uh, Kenneth Copeland. You can go on internet and look up Kenneth Copeland and his uh, his ministry has three steps to a miracle. He would do these uh, miracles also. Then there was um, Benny Hinn later, maybe I think he's still alive, and he has what's called Miracle Crusades. And then a man called Andrew Womack, who I have not, never listened to, has a site and it says how to receive a miracle. So we have these miracle, uh, mi miracle preachers, miracle services in Pentecostal churches and so-called charismatic churches. And even uh, the Roman Catholic Church uh, has uh, miracles that people do. And they become saints and so forth. And a pope, um, the Pope twenty, Pope John the twenty third. I think he was from he was from um, uh, Poland. He died, and they wanted to m make him a saint. And, but they had to have have found a miracle that he did, and so they were looking for miracles. Well, I read one place that somebody said they saw a, the miracle that they saw is they saw him walking on the bottom of the sea. So that was. The, that was the miracle of Pope John the Twenty Third. Now again, these are called miracles. There, you these people are using that word where it really isn't used uh, by Jesus as anything you should be doing. I don't see. Now there's also called works. Now works were the what we would normally call a miracle, but Jesus called them works. Erga, ergonomics comes from that. He didn't call them miracles. He called them works. And we see that in Matthew 23, 5, where Jesus says, and all the works they do uh, to be a spectacle to the men. So that's what I look at these TV evangelists or these miracle workers what are they doing? Are they doing this to be a spectacle to men? Of course they are. They're put broadcasting it all over on, on TV and Internet and so forth. But the works that Jesus says in 14.12 of John, Amen, amen, I say to you, the one believing in me, uh, the works in which I do, even that one will do, and greater than these he shall do, for I go to my Father. Now, what are the works that Jesus is talking about? I don't know of anybody that's walked on water. I don't know anybody that's raised the dead. I don't know anybody that's healed a leper. I don't know anybody that's done any of the things that Jesus has done. And signs and miracles seem to be 
uh, pretty much indigenous to the Christian faith uh, belief. Uh, yeah, I don't know too much about any other uh, religions, the Muslims, the Hindus, and the Buddhists, if they have miracles or they had anybody walk on water or anything like that. But it's throughout uh, Judeo-Christian um, biblical teachings, starting, as I mentioned, uh, in the Old Testament. And um, people were raised from the dead and so forth, but it doesn't call miracles again. So uh, these things uh, are interesting as far as uh, being indigenous to Christianity. And John 6, 29 says, Jesus says, This is the work of God that you should have believed in whom that one sent. So that's the work, the miracle. That's what God wants is somebody's belief. Uh, a lot of people, it would be like a miracle if they believed. And people that are, deny Christ, all, all of a sudden something happens and they do uh, believe. Now, I believe God did a work with me as far as picking a man that's 44 years old that didn't know uh, his left hand from the right. I didn't know what a noun, pronoun, uh, anything, uh, grammar, zero, zilch. I mean, I didn't know anything. He picked me to translate the Old Testament into English in an interlinear format, numerically coded, which had never been done in the history of the world. And now I'm teaching grammar. Uh, that's a work. I believe it's a work of God. It's not a work of something I did. I know it isn't. So now, like right here, we see uh, the purple, the participle. So now I'm teaching what I knew zero at being 44 years old. Now it continues in our text, and it says, Ethi they of two katavenun tos, e thuli of two up pintison of to. Uh, and already as he was going down the royal official back to Capernaum, and here is a participle present act of going, he's doing it. Uh, his bondman met him, came and told him, and reported Legonta saying, again, present act of OT that, uh, your child lives. And opesuzi, uh, epitheto un par of tone, teen oren in e copsoteron eki. And he inquired then of them the hour in which he sufficed much better. K epon, and they said of Oti, they said to him that, Kthis, yesterday, or an abdomen afikan afton o piratos, the eleventh hour, the fever left him. An egno un o patir, oti in a kini ti ora in e, epen afto o e sus oti o eo su zi. Then the father knew that it was in that hour in which Jesus said to him that your son lives. Ke epistavsen of tos, ke eikia of tu oli. And he believed, he and his family, entire family. Now, what kind of belief did he have before compared to the belief afterwards? <laughs> Probably quite a bit different. Uh, the sign of the miracle was given to this man uh, healing his son. But the believing is the real miracle that we all can have, that Jesus wants more than any uh, other type of uh, healing service or uh, standing in front of people and performing these uh, things. And it says in 54, Tuto Pauli Devturon Simeon Epison Oesus Elthon Ectis Eudeus Eastin Galilean. And this, again, was the second sign Jesus did, having come from out of Judea uh, into Galilee, where he went through uh, Samaria. Now, I'm not sure what the first sign was. I don't think it was, uh, the. it could have been the wedding of Cana. I, I can't think of another one. No, uh, I'm not sure what other one he would be referring to here. But uh, the next section, Jesus heals at Bethesda. So now he goes back down to Jerusalem.